Numerical Computation, Chapter 2, MATLAB Video Number 1. In this short video, we'll take a look at how to implement the um, van der Mol matrix method for polynomial interpolation in MATLAB, and we'll look at some um, simulation result. And this is an example we went through in class where we um, our interpolation data is uh, x0 zero is 0, and x1 is 1, and x2 is zero, and 3 over 2. So what one could do will be just type in the van der Mol matrix here. So first column is 1, 1, 1, the second is your x, so 0, 1, 2 third, and the third one is x squared, so 0, 1, and this is 2 thirds squared, that's 4 ninths. Okay, and then you can put the y value in your y vector, that's 1, 0, and half, that's my theta. And then MATLAB saying I have this vector. And then in order to find the coefficients a, we know we just need to solve this system. That's x times a equals to y, right? So remember, it's actually um, x times a equals to y that we need to solve. So a would actually equal to x inverse. Now x is a matrix, okay, times y, okay? So to do that in MATLAB, you can simply type x, this special backslash, times y. So be careful, this is not a division backslash. This is a shorthand to say it's the inverse of x times y. And let's see how we can um, plot the result. So we give our um, interpolation data the x value in this x vector and the corresponding y value in the y vector. And we can simply say plot and sending x and y to plot. So if you want to specify that this is a discrete set of data, you can choose this option in plot, ask, asking um, MATLAB to just put a star where the data is. So I encourage you to do a help desk, help plot in MATLAB to learn all the options it has to offer. And then you type in grid and what it does is that it draws some grid in the background so you see where your data is located. So here we see there are only three points and they are marked with the star here. One and two and three. That's my data and I want to fit in a polynomial that goes through them. Okay, so this command is extremely useful. It's called hold and then you send an option on. What it does is that it keeps the graph that you have plotted and all the new plots you will make will be plotted on top of the old one. So you can view multiple plots in the same graph. Okay, so let's generate a kind of a vector for plotting. So I'll be I call it T, it's just another word for X because X is being used. So I have to call it T, you can call X uh, plot or whatever, X T, something like that. So let's say I want to plot from 0 to 1 with a pretty nice and smooth graph. So I take the distance to be 0 0.01. Okay, and my polynomial, I call it P2, that's evaluated at every point where t will be, the whole t vector. So that will be a1 plus a2 times t plus a3 times t squared. So now be careful, here t is a vector. If you want to square a vector, you can do it here, you can do it in the element-wise way. So you have to add this little dot here, so it's dot to the power 2. That's because t is a vector. So if t is not a vector, then there is no need to add the docs. Okay, and then you can send it into plot t against p2, and if you don't give any option, it will use the default option, that is, a blue line. Okay, so we see this is the polynomial, the blue line, and where the stars we see there are the interpolating points, and you see the polynomial goes through those three points. Well, it's also useful to see how the actual function looks like together on the same plot, so we can see the difference. So we know the function we were interpolating was the cosine function, right? So the cosine function 
and satisfy this data. So what one can do, so remember the hold is still hold on, okay? So whatever we plot now will be on top of the same graph. So we can just plot, use the T again, and then say cosine of pi over 2 times T. Remember, pi is predefined. And I choose a plotting option to be R is for the color, will be red. And the 2 minus sign actually gives me some kind of a dashed dotted line. See, you can see there. So the red one here is the FX. And then we can actually see the difference between them with our eyes. There's a little bit bigger difference here and somewhat smaller difference. And then they agree with each other at the interpolating points. So now let's plot the arrow and we can see actually how big is the arrow. Okay, so we will plot the absolute value of arrow and we also plot together on the same graph the arrow bound that we have derived in class. So since we're plotting the arrow, so we don't want to hold on to the previous graph anymore. So you should say hold off. If you turn it off, that means whatever you plot now will be starting on a fresh plot. So there will be nothing else. Okay, so we compute the arrow bound, and this is the theoretic arrow bound we obtained. Mm -hmm. And then this is the actual arrow, that is the distance between the cosine function and your polynomial P2, right? So the cosine function, remember, T is the variable to plot, okay? And then I take the absolute value. Now you can actually send in two sets of data for the plot function to plot simultaneously. So I'm asking the plot to plot t against the arrow, computed arrow, and without any options, so it will be blue curve, solid curve, and then I plot t arrow bound with the option red and dotted. So here's the graph. So this blue line here is the computational arrow, and the red one is the arrow bound. And then you see the arrow bound nicely bound your arrow below. So here is another simulation I did where I um, increased the interpolating points to 4. So I actually have n equals to 3. And this is a polynomial of degree 3 interpolating the cosine function at these 4 points. Okay, so I added one more point. So here is the graph plotting f together with p3. And you see with your eyes it's not so easy to see the distance between them. They're very close to each other. Here, maybe you see it's a bit different. So it's hard to see what the arrow is from this graph. And therefore, it's useful to plot the arrow and its bound on its own. So if I plotted that, and you see MATLAB automatically rescale the y-axis, and then you see the biggest arrow, I see it's near the boundary, is about... 2.4 maybe times um, 10 to the negative 3. And so um, try these out. Go to MATLAB and play with it on your own and follow what I did and see what you get.